Welcome to the Storytelling That Sticks for Business and Life podcast. I'm your keynote, TED Talk and Story Coach, Doug Stevenson. In this podcast series, I'm going to share with you some simple and practical storytelling techniques and hacks that will make you stand out from the competition so that you can get paid to speak or to give a TED Talk that goes viral or to simply tell your story in a way that makes a difference in the world. You'll learn how to choose, craft, and deliver stories that stick. Personal stories from your amazing life. Business stories. Leadership and sales stories. Stories that are marketable and memorable. Stories that sell you and your product or service. My job as your virtual keynote and story coach is to help you design and deliver stories and speeches that get people to do what you want them to do or to consider a new perspective. If you're serious about using storytelling to advance your career, to get paid to speak, or simply to get your message across in a more engaging and compelling manner, this podcast is for you. All right, well, let's get started. So I want to run something by you, something that I've been thinking about for a while now and see if you're at all interested in. It's a contest, a storytelling contest, obviously, around a topic that I'm going to lay out for you. And the way you'd participate is that you'd record yourself telling a short five to seven minute story. And you can do it on your phone or whatever. You save it as an MP3 or MP4 file. And then you submit it to me via Dropbox or Transfer Big Files or whatever file sharing app you use. And sometimes later, I'll choose which stories to use in a future podcast. And if I choose your story, you'll win two hours of free coaching with me to work on anything you choose. You can work on a story, a TED Talk, a keynote, whatever you want. And on top of that, if I choose your story, I'm going to have you on the podcast as a guest where you'll not only get to tell your story, the one you've submitted, but you'll get to describe your process of choosing and developing your story and how you plan to use it. Now, there is a catch, however. There's a catch. And the catch is that you're required to craft your story using the nine steps of story structure. You can review the nine steps in episode three of this podcast or in my book, Doug Stevenson's Story Theater Method, that you can order online or as a paperback or downloadable. Now, remember that I'll only use the audio version of your story, so you don't have to worry about how good your video looks. So that's the deal, a storytelling contest. And the deadline for submitting your story to me is February 20th. So here's the topic. Are you ready? Here's the topic. Stop, change, go. Stop, change, go is my simple formula for how you live a better life, a more productive life. It's a simple formula. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing that's not working for you. It's holding you back or causing you pain and suffering. So that's the first part. Stop. Change. Decide what change is needed for you to move off in a new direction and commit to taking the actions necessary for the change to happen. And then finally, go. Go forward in a new direction. So as you listen to the way that I lay out this concept of stop, change, go, think about the changes you've already made in your life and consider Consider crafting a story using my nine steps of story structure and using the phrase that pays, stop, change, go. That's the phrase that pays, stop, change, go. Use that phrase that pays to make your point. I want to see, because I'm really curious, I want to see how you put my methodology, what you've been learning from me, into practice. Now, one of the things that's always seemed to work for me in my messaging and my approach to helping others is to keep my messaging simple and bite size. And I like to use just three words, three words whenever possible, three words connected to a basic idea. So the basic idea I had was stop and go. 
You know, when you, you pull up to a stop sign, you stop and then you go, or you pull up to a light and you stop and then you go. Well, so the idea was stop and go. And I thought, what can I do with that? Well, the one thing that you're going to have to keep confronting in your life is the need to change and adapt. And I can tell you based on my own experience that, that it never stops. This need to change and adapt never stops because the world around you is constantly changing and you're constantly changing and evolving. And that means that you have to respond to the changes outside of yourself by adapting. And for most people, change is hard. I've learned this. Change is hard for a lot of people. It's disruptive as heck. It's annoying because it messes with your patterns, how you live your life, your sense of security. And it causes friction in your relationships too because, because your spouse or life partner or the people in your life may have a very different way of dealing with change than you do. And it boils down to this. It boils down to how you change, how you approach it, how you cope with it and deal with it and move through it. And so, and so in trying to find a simple formula for how to do it, how to make change happen in your life, I came up with this simple concept. Stop, change, go. Because it's really that simple. You stop what you're doing that's not working. You make the changes necessary and you go, you move forward. But it's not that simple, is it? It's really complex. What you need to do is you simply need to stop doing whatever you're doing that's not working. To stop putting up with the same crap you've been putting up with for years from people you really shouldn't allow into your life. You need to stop making the same bad choices over and over again. Or, or you need to stop believing something that you know isn't true, some belief system that isn't true because believing it has caused you pain and anguish. So you need to stop. It's just that simple. Just stop. But it's not that simple at all because you first have to recognize what it is that you're doing that's self-destructive. And for me, that kind of self-reflection, self-introspective, navel-gazing, that wasn't only hard, it wasn't even an option. It wasn't even on my radar. I mean, for the longest time, I didn't know that I needed to look to myself for the problems in my life because I was too busy blaming other people for my failures. It wasn't until many years later that I was able to look back with some objective perspective. Oh, did you hear what I just said? That was good. Objective perspective to recognize that what I was doing, the choices that I was making were self-destructive. But now, in hindsight, I can see how I was the culprit. I was the one who was sabotaging my own happiness. So before you can stop, you have to know what you need to stop. Stop what? Stop smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol? Well, that's easy. You know what that is. Stop letting people walk all over you. Stop believing something your parents told you about relationships or life that didn't work for them and sure as heck hasn't worked for you. Stop binge eating at 11 o'clock at night. Stop procrastinating. Stop what? Stop what? Oh my God, it's so confusing. Stop what? What do I need to stop doing that's causing me pain and anguish and holding me back? Now, if you want to know what you need to stop, you just have to be honest with yourself about a couple of things like, who do you avoid being with, hanging out with? Who makes you crazy and uncomfortable every time you're with them? Okay, well, stop being with them. Or, or um, what situations make you uncomfortable? Well, you can stop putting yourself in those situations. And here's an obvious one. Who or what? causes you physical or emotional pain that makes you sick, that makes you crazy, that makes you sad or angry or resentful. Bottom line, bottom line, you can look back in time and recall the changes you've already made, the things you've already stopped doing, and that can be the first part of your story, the stop part. The first part is generally pretty hard because 
it's the beginning of the end of something. You're going to stop doing something, which means that's the end of something that you've been doing, like breaking up with someone or quitting a job or changing a destructive life pattern or belief or behavior. In the nine step sequence, the nine steps of story structure, the stop part of your story will take up the first four steps. Step one, set the scene. Step two, introduce the character. Step three, begin the journey. And step four, encounter the obstacle. The obstacle is that thing that you need to stop doing. So, okay, we've done that. That's the stop part. Now, let's move on to the change part of stop, change, go. Step five in the nine steps of story structure is where the change takes place. It's the overcome the obstacle step. The process of making a change requires that you move beyond knowing what you need to stop to actually stopping, taking the action steps needed to change, breaking the negative patterns, walking away from toxic relationships. Now, back in episode nine, stories that make change happen, I told the story of how I set a goal to move from Chicago to Los Angeles to pursue my acting career. Do you remember that one? But I couldn't seem to get my act together to actually leave, to leave Chicago. I kept putting it off. But I was finally able to make that change happen when my friend Susan suggested that I pick a date to get out a calendar and look three to six months out into the future and to pick a date. And on that date, no matter what, I'd leave. I'd make the change happen. I'd leave. Somehow, some way, I'd leave. And you know what? It worked. That simple concept of picking a date in order to make change happen is the only way I've ever found the courage to do it. When I've needed to make a change in my life, I've always had to just pick a date. And on this date, I'm going to do it. Scared or not, painful or not, I'm going to do it. So in the change part of this equation, my suggestion to you is that you pick a date. That's how you make it happen. How you quit that crummy job or walk into a gym to start working out or you make a pact with yourself to stop eating after 8 p.m. <laughs> I know that one. That's a hard one. But you get the idea. It all starts with a specific action on a specific date, a commitment you make with yourself. Change doesn't happen someday. Someday is not a date on a calendar. It's not specific. Change takes courage, right? It takes courage. It can be scary and bring up all kinds of fears and insecurities because all of the what ifs start to come in. What if I ask for a raise and my boss says no? Well, then you look for another job. What if I step into the gym and I look like a fool? Hey, you know what? You know what? Everybody who has ever gone to the gym for the first time feels like that. So you do it anyway. I remember the first time I walked into a gym, I felt like they're going to know. They're going to know it's my first time. And you know what? Nobody cared. <laughs> they didn't care. You have to work through the what ifs or you'll never get to the other side of change. So that's step five in the nine steps. The overcome the obstacle part, where you overcome your fears and doubts and just do it. You change. Now, we move on to the best part of this stop, change, go concept, because the go part is where you are now reaping the benefits of having initiated the change. And in my experience, this is where the relief and the joy and the exhilaration and the feeling of empowerment shows up because you're now moving forward into a new phase of your life, a more positive phase, free from all the baggage that held you back. And when you're crafting your story, the one that I hope you're planning on submitting for the contest, I mean, come on now, I want you to do this. This is step six. When you're crafting your story, this is step six. Resolve the story. This is where you tell us how things worked out. And it's generally a very positive resolution. It's positive and forward moving because when you stop doing the things that have been holding you back, 
and you make the necessarily changes in your life and you make changes to your routines and behaviors, it's like you stepped out of the darkness and into the light. Like you unleashed the shackles that have kept you stuck. And for me, for me, here's an analogy. It's like crossing the finish line of your first 5K race. I remember my first 5K race. I'd always wanted to run in a 5K because I was out of shape, but I kept putting it off because it was going to be a big step for me to commit to being a runner and to start getting back into shape. And when I showed up at the starting line in downtown Colorado Springs for my first 5K, I was surrounded. I remember being there on the street and I was surrounded by about 150 other people, runners. And it was immediately obvious to everyone around me that it was my first time because I was decked out with all new running gear and clothes and sports gels and two water bottles. I mean, I was decked out as if I was going to run an Ironman triathlon. <laughs> but I had picked a date and I was there ready to run. And although it was hard and I was really slow and it was painful and I had to stop and walk a whole bunch of times. I did it. I ran the 5K. And when I crossed the finish line, I felt so happy. I was so proud of myself for showing up and doing it, even though I sucked and I was slow. But you know what I found out? I found out I wasn't the only one who sucked. I wasn't the only runner that day who was slow and struggling. But I realized that the people around me were having a good time. And some of the people around me, when they saw that I was struggling, they'd stop and go, come on, guy, you can do it. Come on. And some people would give me a high five. And you know what else was really cool? Nobody was paying any attention to me. They were running their race. I was so worried. All the what ifs about what if people think I'm an idiot? What if people think I'm a beginner? But you know, when I crossed the finish line, we were all just runners. And now I was a runner too. So that's how I resolve a story. I, I, I tell the story of the obstacles and challenges, but the resolve part of your story, the go part of your story, that's where you tell us how things worked out and how they are now different for having made the change. You resolve the story. And for most storytellers, the resolve part is the happy ending. It's where you're happy and proud, and there's a positive resolution. So there you have it. Now it's your turn. What's your stop, change, go story? I want to hear it. I want to hear it. All of the people listening to this podcast want to hear it. We all want to hear it. And since you've been studying with me for a while now, you've been listening to me, you've been listening to all these different episodes, you've got the nine steps. And the rest of the tools and techniques I've been sharing with you and that my guests have been sharing with you as well. And now it's your turn to do the storytelling. It's your turn to inspire somebody with your story. So what do you say? Huh? What do you say? Are you game? Are you up for the challenge? All right. So the first step, first step is for you to pick a date. And on that date, you're going to sit down and start writing your story. And then you can record it and send it to me. This is going to be fun. I'm really jazzed about this. I'm really stoked because I want to hear from you. Because this is where you get to step out of the shadows of listening to this podcast in the quiet of your headphones or your car or your office or whatever. You get to step up to the starting line and submit your story. So you've got until February 20th to record it and upload it to... Dropbox or transfer big files or whatever file sharing software you use and to send it to me at Doug at DougStevenson.com. Are you ready? On your mark, set, go. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. If you feel that you learned something valuable today, something that you can use that will make your story stick, stories that make you and your business memorable, marketable, and monetizable, there are three things I'd like you to do. First, 
click on the follow or subscribe button and leave a review wherever you listen. And second, share this podcast with your friends and coworkers, your email list and on social media. And third, connect with me on LinkedIn. And when you're ready to get serious about taking your stories to the next level, or if you have an important speech, presentation, or TED Talk coming up, or if you want some guidance on how to make the transition to becoming a professional speaker, let's schedule your free 30-minute coaching session where we can get to know each other and see if we're a good fit. And as always, I'd love to hear from you with your questions and comments. Let me know that you're out there listening and learning. You can send an email with your questions, comments, and suggestions to Deborah at DougStevenson.com. That's Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, at DougStevenson.com. Hey, thanks for listening. Until the next episode, I'm Doug Stevenson.